The day today is April 9th, 2024, and for the last four months, I have been in my house doing a 100% restoration and remodel of the entire thing. And I really have not done any projects outside of the house whatsoever. So if you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Cole. I don't know if I've ever formally introduced myself. I am 26 years old and I am a fifth generation. This is not five, this, this is five. I'm a fifth generation farmer. And my family farms 1,000 acres of corn and 1,000 acres of soybeans for a total of 2,000 acres. And I originally started this YouTube channel as an outlet for me to be able to teach what we do on a farm, what actually goes on. And all these side projects that I do and the cleanups, the buildings and the whatever I'm working on, that's just kind of my free time. But my primary job is a farmer and for the last four months we've been in the house and we have not done anything on the farm so while i've been taking a little bit of an extended leave i will admit working in the house my family has been busy at work on the farm so for the last four months i'm gonna go over everything that my family's done and kind of what we have coming going into this next growing season. Now, before we get started, I have a couple things I would like to ask of you. If you enjoy our content and you want to help support the channel, would you be willing to watch the video all the way through? It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm. And the second thing is, what do you guys think of this new microphone that I'm using? I have one mounted up right here. I've never really used one of these before. I always just have one mounted up on the camera. And I want you guys to be able to understand everything that's going on and an important part of understanding is the ability to hear and somebody's honking at me right now. And I think that this will help with the ability to hear. Like right now we have like 20 mile an hour winds and you can't even hear the wind or at least I hope you can't hear the wind. So feedback on that would be appreciated and watching the video all the way through. But with that being said, let's hop into these updates and see what is going on on the farm. Update number one, we're just gonna get the big one out of the way right away, and that is around the bin site. If you are not familiar, we built this bin site going on, what was that, three years ago now. Yeah, and once they got it built, then we noticed we started having some problems. And long story short, we have a lawsuit around it, and we are waiting to go to court and I have literally not heard anything from the opposing side who we filed the lawsuit against. So I, I guess we're just waiting for court. I have all the ducks in a row on my end as far as engineers and all the people we worked with and like that is all 100% ready to go. We are literally just waiting to go to court or I guess we have a deposition first and then courts. I'm new to the whole court scene. I don't really understand how it all works. But I, I absolutely have no new news when it comes to the bin site. We are simply just waiting to go to court. And while we're on the topic of construction, behind me we have our corn dryer. We put corn on the inside of it and then we are basically able to burn LP. And then it literally just takes the water out of the corn so then we can store it inside of the bins. And then it does not rot. It's kind of like taking meat and turning it into beef jerky. It lasts a lot longer as beef jerky. We're just turning our corn into beef jerky, so to speak. But this dryer is like a 1990, and it's not really the most efficient. It's pretty small. We can only dry corn up to like 22, 23% moisture. Otherwise, the dryer just literally stops. It, it physically cannot go any slower to dry any higher moisture of corn. We would like to start our harvest when we are at like 28% moisture. So we have to wait quite a while to get started for everything to dry down for this dryer to be able to take it. And also when we're drying at those speeds, it takes like three hours to dry one semi when our combine can do like four semis in an hour. So this has been a pretty big bottleneck for us. And so I have actually been designing a new 
Pryor, our new drying facility for our bin site. So I've been visiting with some concrete engineers. We've been figuring out what we need for concrete underneath of it, as far as how much concrete, how much rebar, what kind of soil we have underneath, just everything we would need below ground. I've been working with some electricians to figure out what we need for wiring and how all that's gonna look, getting things over into our dryer shack. And then we've also been looking at a new dryer. We haven't pulled the trigger on one yet. We don't know what's going on with the bin site lawsuit yet, so we're kind of just sitting here like we want to do projects but we don't know what's going to go on here but how long is this lawsuit thing going to take so we are just taking the steps we are comfortable taking right now which is getting things lined up as far as what model are we wanting to get what is all the engineering specs looking like just getting kind of the groundwork stuff out of the way. So then once we know what's going on, then we will be able to execute and already have all these decisions made ahead of time. So we're pretty excited about that, to be honest. I, I know it seems small. I mean, it's, well, not small, but like, yay, a, a grain dryer. But for me, that's, that's pretty exciting. And for most farmers, a, a new grain dryer, something maybe you do twice during your whole life so like that's a pretty big deal before we continue further into this video i do want to lay just a little bit of a footnote down when i'm talking about the size of stuff and scale oh my goodness the wind just about blew you guys over but i am talking about it relative to us and our farm so if your farm is not as big as ours i'm not knocking your stuff in any way shape or form if you just got a dryer like this and it is new to you and it is 1990 that is stinking awesome i grew up like that my entire life we had something that probably should have been thrown away 15 years prior and we just keep figuring out ways to patch it and use it and we made it work so like i am super used to just using whatever resources you have available to make things work so by no way shape or form am i knocking anything by what you have it is solely you compared to you so when i'm talking about my stuff it is just me compared to me and the efficiencies and areas we are trying to improve on with our farm so for us this is starting to become a small unit and it is starting to become a bottleneck and pretty much anything else i talk about that is the, the that is the lens that we are looking at it through so wherever you are starting that is incredible i mean the fact that you are even starting something is so cool to me so keep doing what you're doing and just don't take into too much account of the words that i'm saying here and i may refer a lot to i me we but... It, it's our whole entire family. I really have not done hardly anything of what we see here. Actually, God gave me every single gift and ability that I have and all the opportunities that I have before me. That, that was nothing that I did. I was purely God-given when it comes to that stuff. And then all this other stuff, my grandfather farmed for 70 years and his dad farmed, his dad's dad farmed, my dad's farmed for... He started literally running the combine by himself when he was five. So between like the, all the five generations that have, or the four generations that have been before me, we have like 200 combined years of farming experience. And that has literally just been passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down. So basically everything we're seeing here is literally built on top of the shoulders of all of the generations before me. So. I'm coming in brand new to this, and I've done very little when it comes to what's been improved around here. So I'm not gonna even try to take credit for what has been done. And one last thing on the bin side, this has been something my dad's been working a lot on while we've been working in the house. He has been busy loading up truckers, so this is completely empty. This will hold approximately 260 semi-loads of corn, and we have zero in it right now. So there is literally maybe like a hundred kernels of corn between both bins right now. There's nothing in them. We are completely out of corn. Okay, I take the 260,000 bushel thing back. Well, kind of. It'll hold about that when things are the way they are supposed to be, but we are not comfortable even filling it nearly that full and we didn't have enough corn for that anyway for it to be full but that is its full capacity when everything is how it's supposed to be and then when it comes to the soybeans i gotta talk a little bit quiet in here because it's pretty empty and then it gets pretty echoey if you talk loud so we're gonna keep it down a little bit but we have 
three bins completely empty and this has been number four that I'm standing in right now. We actually just took out pretty much our last load yesterday and there's maybe 100, 200 bushels left in here. The sweep needs to make one more pass around the thing behind me, make one more pass around the bend. And then there's probably like an inch deep where the soybeans along the entire floor. And this is a 42 foot in diameter bend. And then there's a little bit stacked up along the edge, along the walls. So there's maybe 10, 15% of a semi in here. What we have left just needs to be cleaned out with shovels and brooms, leaf blower. And then we will just bring this last 100, 150 bushels to the co-op and then we will officially be 100% out of grain. So by no means are we marketing experts. We hire a company called Ever Ag. I'll put the link down in the description and right here on the screen if you want to get a hold of them. We are part of their foundations program. We've been working with them. I think this is year number eight we are going on with them and we have no intentions of stopping. We have been so pleased with the, what they've been able to help us do and we're in full decision mode like nobody makes decisions for us without coming through us when it comes to them but they've been such great advisors and opened us up to different opportunities we didn't even know existed and so we've been working with them and they pushed pretty heavy of hey we should probably be moving some grain and we're glad we made that decision because basically kind of once we pulled the trigger on this stuff the grain market's just been doing this ever since and it's also been kind of nice because we have some of the highest interest rates we've had in like 20 years something like that and traditionally we paid about fifty thousand dollars a year in interest on money that we would borrow to be able to put into our crop and then once we harvested the crop we would get the money back we would have to pay that to the bank plus the interest and then whatever was left after that was money that we made that was our profit and this year we were looking at like a 10 percent operating note interest rate when traditionally we were like a five and a half when we were paying fifty thousand dollars a year at a five and a half percent interest rate at a 10 percent interest rate we'd be paying close to a hundred thousand dollars a year basically hey your profit margin yeah it just kind of went to the bank and so by us being able to sell this grain earlier we were now able to pay that money off faster at the bank so we didn't have to pay as much interest which that will help the bottom line on the farm a lot so it's just kind of an added bonus i also forgot to mention that my family also raises hay so thousand acres of corn thousand acres of soybeans and then all of the waterways and field edges and stuff from like the areas along creeks and that kind of thing where grass goes grows out and we are able to mow it and bale it we do this is actually my brother's business so i have nothing to do with this whatsoever other than if cooper needs help moving some bales around or moving equipment or hey i'm out of net wrap or something like that you know we we assist there but the hay business is my brother's and it's been a bit of a struggle this year going into the winter time it was super dry last summer and there was not a lot of hay made hay prices were really high and so the trajectory going into winter was if you held on to your hay by the end of winter people were really going to be needing it the price was going to be pretty high higher than it even was last year and so my brother ended up storing like 200 bales and then the winter was extremely mild a lot of 45 50 degree days and basically when it's like that the animals don't need as much food so the hay market pretty much tanked i know my brother was offered 170 dollars a bale for every single bale he had last fall and he turned it down and he just sold some the other day for 120 dollars a bale so i guess that's kind of farming what do you do sometimes stuff like that just happens so my brother's got quite a few hay bales left and we're getting ready to go into the next baling season so i'm not really quite sure where we're going to put them all but i guess my brother's got he's got a lot of hay so that's a good thing but just with the price thing it's a bit of a bummer but that's farming on a more exciting note we have some new help on the farm this year roman is my friend he is from ukraine he's lived in the united states now for 10 years he's going through all his citizenship application stuff right now to become a u.s citizen but he has his papers so he is a legal resident of the united states and he is working with us on the farm so roman is pretty much an all-around kind of guy literally knows how to do anything and everything and if he doesn't 
Once he discovers he doesn't know how to do something, he will research, 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 and he will understand it better than anybody you've ever met. So Roman was originally taken on when we started with the house project, and I basically just needed someone to help run the camera. <laughs> and then come to find out he literally knows how to do all this other stuff, which I did not know. And so he's really morphed into an all around team player on the farm and we are incredibly thankful for having Roman around. So we will be seeing Roman this entire next year and hopefully indefinitely, we really like working with Roman. Roman, as long as you wanna be here, you are 100% welcome to be on the farm. And then on the other end of the farm who's been working with Cooper is our neighbor, Zach. So Zach is pretty much as mechanical as they get, literally can build anything with his hand. So him and Cooper get along just like this. And so since last harvest, Zach's been helping Cooper. So they've been super busy all winter long getting equipment ready while Roman and I have been working in the house and dad has been hauling grain. So this year we have Roman and we have Zach. And last but definitely not least on the YouTube production end of things, editing is 100% the most time consuming and hardest part about making YouTube videos. For the first 700 or so YouTube videos that I made, I did all the editing myself. So you'd pretty much work for 12 hours and then you'd come home, you'd edit for six or seven hours, you get a couple hours of sleep and you do that every single day. And after 700 videos of doing that, we found Cedric. So Cedric, he lives in Las Vegas. We send him all of our footage and he's the mastermind behind putting all of these edits together post filming. So we have Roman, Zach and Cedric. So it's super exciting to be able to build this team. And honestly, it is 100% you guys watching these videos that we make is the reason why we are able to do this stuff. So from the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of my team's heart, I'm speaking for them. I didn't talk with them about this, but thank you. Another really big farm update is we got some brand new tires for our sprayer. This last fall, we decided we were gonna come in with a deep gripper and rip all of the ground that was corn last year are going to be beans this year 13 inches deep. And we did that to mix in our fertilizer that was on the top, get that mixed in incorporated down below, and then also to address some severe compaction issues that we had. So right now our ground is incredibly soft. Since our ground is so soft right now, when we come in with our sprayers that currently have skinnies on them, we call these tires that are 12 inches wide skinnies, they are going to leave huge ruts and they're gonna compact really bad underneath them. And we don't want that. Now we have two sprayers. This is sprayer number one. And then over there is sprayer number two. A couple years ago, we outfitted sprayer number two with what we call fats, which are the tires that are behind me. They're about twice as thick as the skinny. These ones are about 22 inches across. So think of like someone wearing a snowshoe when they're walking in snow. They don't sink in when they have the snowshoe on, but when they're just with their foot, you know, the skinny, they sink way down. So spare number two has fats, spare number one does not. So we are putting fats on spare number one. These standard Goodyear 650s have some pretty interesting technology on them. First off, they're nice and wide, which is exactly what we're looking for in a float. But secondly, these bars are also wider than a typical bar. And that's with the snowshoe example. It helps distribute out our load more when we're going through the field because the name of the game, we don't want compaction and we don't want a giant wheel rut. So these do an excellent job of that. And then number two, we want a tire that lasts a really long time because when we're going down the road and stuff, that is the absolute worst thing on the tire. Out in the soil, they last a long time, but going down the highways, it just chews them up. So they designed these ones to specifically have a thicker middle area right through here. So this is the part that primarily contacts the road and that helps us with the longevity of the tire. And last but not least, these ones have what's called an R1 tread design. So the depth of them is not quite as deep as a typical tractor tire may be. So we're not pushing these treads way down into the soil, making more of a tire run because 
honestly, if we didn't have to have a tie rod at all, that's exactly what we would want. So today we were fortunate enough to be able to nab Denny from Heartland Tire, and he's gonna come down, he's got his work truck right behind us, and he's gonna install these new tires for us. How long have you changed tires for, Denny? Uh, 28 years with Heartland Tire. So do you think this is gonna go pretty smooth today? Yes, hopefully it goes smoother than the last one with the 50s on <laughs> old Rusty there. So if we do have a problem, what do you foresee it being? Um, just the height the difference between the flotations we're putting on and the narrow rows that are on there now. Because we're put, we have 54 inch wheels on it now, we're gonna be putting 38s. Yep, there's eight inches difference between the 54s and the 38s, so. Okay, well this is gonna be the man to do the job and he's one of the best. So in true Ricky Bobby fashion, Denny got these things on with absolutely no problem. So um, these- We helped them. Okay. <laughs> I, Mr. I, Mr. I, Scott I, I here, AKA it. Blister, he helped a whole lot. <laughs> But we have the new latest and greatest tires on here and I really don't know a lot about these because these are actually literally the first four in the field in the world. So this is Scott with Titan Tire. He's the one who, did you design these? Uh, yep, we, we did in Des Moines. We did okay, Des Moines. I'll, I'll let you talk about it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Oh well, yeah, so this is a, a new size. It's not, it's not a new design, but it's new for this application. So uh, this is our R14 tire and you might see it on like compact utility tractors, this type of design. So this is the first time we've gone to these super, they call them uh, metrics, wide metrics. And so this is VF650, 65R38 VF. Um, but what this does is it, it's kind of a hybrid. So you take, you got the lug of a, your typical R1 tread pattern, but then we throw a bunch of elements in the center for a little harder surfaces for, so for sprayer, you think about it, you're on the road quite a bit, right? You're, you're rolling, so um, this is gonna be for good wear, good ride, and then when you get into the wetter stuff, good cleaning, good traction. All right, let me break this down into English real quick. So this has a less deep lug pattern, so it's not putting quite a big of a tire track into the field. It's got a nice wide profile to it, but we have more of this going on in the center, so going down the road, it's not gonna wear as much. This is more designed for heavy road use all the time, not having to replace tires because we're driving them down the road. So this is gonna be more up to it. We have further space in between, but notice how we don't just have regular tractor tire lugs. That's part of the road component, but we have them spaced out, so we actually shed the mud and they work for traction the way they're supposed to. And what you sh what he said, and so you notice how the lugs kind of broke up here, this element right here? That is gonna be good for if you're on hillsides and how you kind of drift, you kind of slide down off of, because if you think about that bar as one big slide run, or a sled sure. runner, you can, now you got a biting edge here, so you should notice maybe not wanting to, to drift a little bit in the in hillsides type application. So yeah, we're excited about it. Literally the very first four ever built. And you, I won't tell you what I had to do to get these, but. I don't uh, wanna know. We don't wanna know. <laughs> don't wanna know. Hi, I'm Luke from Wold Rim and Wheel. Today inside one of these 650s, we've got our wheel, a 23 inches wide by 38 inch diameter to fit on this machine. Wold Rim and Wheel, we specialize in custom applications. Scott reached out to us from Titan. We partnered with them. He was looking for four wheels. Uh, he only needed four, not high quantity. We do specialize in low quantity, fast lead times. And so that brought us here today. So now that we got everything mounted up, we have Sean from Titan Tire here, and he's got a set of scales that we're gonna run underneath the sprayer. We're gonna get some weights. We're gonna weigh the whole machine with everything in ready full functionality form. And then he's gonna tell us what we need for air pressure in the tire. So I guess this is his first day on the job and we're excited for day him to learn. One. <laughs> day number one. Hope it goes well. All right, so the whole theory behind uh, weighing up equipment is 
getting this tire down on the ground. These are VFs, so that stands for uh, very increased flexion. Oh, I thought it was very flat. No, it's not. It's not. It can be. I mean, based on how much air pressure we let out of these. So, so yeah, you can run about 40%, be about 40% less uh, air pressure than a standard tire. So, putting these down on the ground and getting them weighed up, everything's based off of weight will allow this machine to have uh, less compaction, uh, better flotation, better ride, and just all the benefits of the VF technology. So yeah, we got the back up here. Um, we got some weights here on the handheld. Uh, it took some weight off the rear with the weight transfer with the booms out on the rear, so. So right now we just have scales under the back tires? Yep. And what is that way? With the booms out, um, you're right at uh, 9,580 pounds. Uh, with the booms in, I wrote the weight down over there, you were uh, 12,260. Really? So, quite a bit of difference. Okay, so after we got this unit weighed up, um, the total unit taking the tank into consideration, uh, basically completely loaded, comes out to be 36,100 pounds. Uh, the split on it is roughly 1,000 pounds difference front and rear. So with this particular tire right here, it's gonna be set at 15 PSI all the way around. So pretty easy to remember right now, just to kind of show you uh, you know, they come as mounting air pressure, this comes as an assembly, and we checked the air pressure before, and the way it sits, it's sitting at uh, 38 PSI. So pretty overinflated, and if you were to run it this way, you, you possibly could run into uh, just a bad ride situation, you're not going to have, you know, all the flotation this tire has, so setting it down on the ground at, uh, at 15 PSI, you're going to get the best benefits out of it. So with that 15 PSI, compared to a standard tire, where does that fall? Okay. Well, this would be 40% uh, less, so it would be 40% of that uh, that 15 pounds. You don't so have that number on the top? I don't have that number off the top of my head, but I'm <laughs> guessing you'd probably be in the neighborhood of, I'd say anywhere from uh, 40 to, to 45 PSI would be my guess. Okay, so basically the so. less air pressure we are running, the less compaction we're putting on the ground? Absolutely. So when you when you let air pressure out of a tire um, and that sits down, you're gonna, you're gonna get more flat plate out of that tire. So it's actually gonna get a wider footprint setting that tire down on the ground. So with a standard tire, you're not gonna be able to do that. So I guess that's where the special Goodyear Titan Tire technology comes into play with the special sidewall and stuff with this particular tire that allows right. us to be able to do that. Well, and that's, it's basically VF technology. You know, there's a lot of VF technology out there. There's IF technology out there. So uh, the IF is 20% uh, less and the VF is 40% less. What does so, VF stand for? So VF is uh, very increased flexion. Okay. And IF would be uh, increased flexion. So. They're very creative when they came yes. up with those acronyms. Yes. <laughs> yep. So, okay, well, we're looking forward to running these things. I am looking forward to you running these These are the huh? first four in the world in the field, right? You have the very first. You are first. We only had to pay triple to get them. <laughs> These tires are going to be a really big update for the farm this year, and we are really looking forward to running them. Welcome to the big machine shed. We are in high hopes that this coming year we can hopefully put in an overhead door in the big machine shed. These are the original sliding doors to the building. They, I mean, they work absolutely just fine. The problem is we are standing on the west end of the building. In Iowa, we primarily get winds out of the west and so when we open these doors on this end and get that nice west wind blowing in the doors that are on the back of the building they tend to want to blow out and so when the wind gets too strong we don't want it to blow the doors off the back end of the shed we've had that happen a few times before extremely annoying and so if we had overhead doors that would alleviate that problem because well number one we could just open both of them at the same time the air would blow right through not a problem number two overhead door we'd be rebuilding the frame around the door and they're, they make ones that are designed for heavy wind, and so we could have this end open. The other end would be 100% A-OK, -okay unless we have like 100 mile an hour winds, which the doors probably wouldn't be the only things going down if that were the case. But depending how things go this year, we would really, really like to get an overhead door for this, so we will see. But for now, this is what we got. The tractor behind me is the tractor we call the 7140. We, we call it that because the numbers on the side, it's literally Case IH model 7140. This is a 1991. We've owned it since I was, I think seven. So we've had it for 19 years. 
We've replaced like two tires on it during those 19 years. We're looking at getting some new tires for this, so that's kind of cool. But the biggest update that we've done to this tractor is we got it ceramic coated. So every year, you know, you can come in and wax your equipment. And then once that wax wears off, you get kind of that dull look coming in again. The scratches start to come through. Well, a ceramic coating, they basically like fix the paint before they do it. And then once they ceramic coat it, it's like a permanent wax or a, a wax that lasts for a really long time. So we decided to do that on the 7140. We also decided to do the 340, which is our biggest tractor. It's a little bit hard to see right now with the sun coming in the background and we ran this in the field the other day getting a piece of tillage implement set up so it's a little bit dusty right now but it's really hard to tell but this thing literally looks wet when it's dry ceramic coating did incredible number on the 340 it looks good honestly it looks good on everything we put it on this tractor is getting close to 35 years old and the thing looks stinking pristine ceramic coating just same thing makes it look wet it's cool stuff. Expensive, but cool. We're, we're giving it a try. We'd like to do it on more things if we think it's going to work out long term, but we're kind of dipping our feet into the water. Well, I guess we did like most of our tractors with it, but <laughs> we're giving it a try and going to see how it works for in the future. And then the last tractor we did it to is the tractor that my dad runs on the 16 row planter. This is our 4840. This is, I believe it's 1980 or 1982. So it's over 40 years old. And after getting this thing ceramic coated, it, the shine and sheen makes it literally look like a brand new John Deere tractor. This thing looks good. It's gonna be turning some heads this year when it's running out in the field. I apologize for the lighting in this building. We literally have four lights at the very front that light up half of the front 35 feet of the building. And this building's 170 feet long. So the back 135 feet has absolutely no lights whatsoever. We would like to deck this building out with lights just like all of our other buildings when when you turn the light switch on it's like turning on the sun but we have not got to it yet we've been working on other projects but this is definitely on the to-do list of what we would like to do so when we're in the back of this building I apologize that the lighting is a little spotty we just don't have any lights. This, this is another thing for our case of having overhead doors because if we had them in the back we would have a heck of a lot more lighting there without having to install the lights up above but when we do that and have the lift in here installing the door, then, you know, we might as well put the lights because we have the lift here. See, when it comes to wanting stuff, you got to figure out how to, you know, strategically make your argument. So that way you get both things that you want. With the addition of Zach helping Cooper, they've been every day working on all of our equipment, getting everything ready. So the 340 has been fully serviced. Everything is 100% ready to rock and roll on this from oil changes, checking tire pressure, got all the egg leader GPS monitors, everything's updated. Pete Youngblood came out, he did his full service on everything. So this tractor is 100% ready to go. It's hooked up to a high speed disc right now. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of tillage with it this spring. And then this is going to be hooked up to our 24 row planter. 7140, same thing. Everything has been gone through. This is 100% ready to go. Dad has been looking at some new tires to put on this. Cooper is going to be using this tractor for his hay bale set up this year. He's going to be running his mower on it. The front tires are starting to show some pretty good signs of wear. We did have a little bit of repair done on this tractor this year. Cooper and Zach pulled all the hoods and everything off and they did end up putting a new radiator inside of it. It had a hole. It was taking about a half gallon every day so it just got really annoying. We probably ran that in an embarrassing long amount of time having to put a half gallon in it every time we wanted to use it we, we probably did that for like five years but they got it fixed now so we don't have to deal with that anymore and then they also put some new hydraulic fittings on the back of the tractor so we did invest about two thousand dollars into this tractor this year but this is a good tractor for us cooper uses it for all of his hay stuff it's a great utility tractor to have around the farm and we do use this on augers when we are putting grain in the bins during harvest. So this tractor is all ready to go. Well, we'll be getting new tires on it, but for now it can run. The next item that Zach and Cooper got ready is our 16 row planter. We have two planters, the 16 row, which is this one, and then our 24 row. The 24 row plants corn and beans, but this is the 16 row. It only plants soybeans. We only ran about hundred acres through it last year. And last year we also 
pretty much replaced most of the wear components on it. So there really wasn't a lot that Zach and Cooper had to go through. They pulled it into the shop for a day, checked everything over, and this thing is 100% ready to plant soybeans. And speaking of seed, we have taken delivery of all of the corn and all of the soybeans that we are going to be planting this year. So if you've ever wondered what a thousand acres of corn and a thousand acres of soybean seed look like, you're looking at it. And not only have we taken delivery of all of our seed, we've also taken delivery of all of our products that we use to control our pests. So things like weeds, bugs, different diseases, all the products behind me is stuff that we spray on to control those things. So, I mean, it's not that exciting. It's a bunch of smelly liquids over there, but we've taken delivery of them. The Thunder Creek fuel trailer has been gone through. We put a new fuel filter on that. The, the maintenance on this thing's pretty easy, but this is ready to go out into the fields, be pulled behind the pickup truck, and it will supply us with diesel fuel while we are planting or when we're running tillage. When it comes to the John Deere 4840, we had to invest around $600 into it this year. Zach and Cooper pulled the hood off of this one and they replaced the radiator in it. So they did the 7140 and they did the John Deere. I don't remember if they both got new radiators or if one got a new one and one got a built one I honestly don't remember but it was well worth spending the $600 on this tractor because we use this tractor for augers we use it for the grain vac if we need to we will use it to plant soybeans and then if Cooper is mowing with the 7140 then he can have this tractor either hooked up to the rake or he can have it hooked up to the baler so Cooper mainly uses these two two-wheel drive tractors for his mowing stuff and they're just really handy to have around and this tractor, along with the 7140, were two tractors that my grandpa bought basically for Cooper and I when we were little so we could both run a tractor with a grain cart. So these tractors mean a lot to us and we like to keep them around absolutely as long as we can. Zach and Cooper did nothing to the combine yet. We have had it inspected. We have a list of what was found that needs to be fixed. We've just been getting all this other spring work stuff done and so we're not gonna need this for a few months yet. So this is on the to-do list of items we need to do but combine's just been sitting inside here. Actually, I take that back. They did put a hopper extension on it. We were able to find one that it adds, I believe, 50 bushels to what it held or 65 bushels. So now we have a 410 bushel hopper instead of a 350 bushel hopper. So that'll help us be able to pass all the way through our fields and our half mile long rows so we're not dumping cab corn out on the ground. So they did that like right when the winter started, so I, I almost forgot about that one. Zach and Cooper also spent a couple days working on the 24 row planter. They just basically went through all of the wear items. There was a couple they had to replace. I know there was quite a few seed tubes, the part where the seed actually falls down and it travels inside of before it falls down into the furrow that's created underground. We had to replace a couple of those, but I mean, it just takes a while working on this 24 row planter. Like once you do something once on one row, you got to do it 23 more times to get all the rest. But we plant corn and soybeans with this and they got everything all snuffed up. So this is ready to plant. We are now in the back of the big machine shed as far away from the light as we can get. So I apologize for the lighting, but it is what it is. Behind me, we have a new to us semi-trailer. This is one of our trucker Ronnie's extra trailers. He didn't use it anymore, so we bought it from him. This is a 2010. When we got it, it needed a new tarp. It needed a really bad aciditing. It needed some new lights, some new brakes, some new tires, new trap doors. And so Zach and Cooper have been working on all that stuff. They got it all up to snuff, and we actually put an electric tarp on it now instead of the old crank ones. And we got LED lights all the way around the thing. So you can see it from really far way away and then to absolutely set everything off just like how we had the tractor ceramic coated well we tried it on this semi-trailer and it turned it from like a matte black to this thing looks wet we have a couple high school boys that have a detailing business and they came out and they were able to take like the old sticker residue and stuff off and then they corrected all the areas of the paint on this and there's a lot of surface area here they put a lot of work into it but then they ceramic coated it it looks good. And while they were at it, they polished the aluminum wheels. So we're running a 2010 trailer, new to us. We are super excited about this, but going down the road, if you see this thing from 10 feet away, you'd think it's a new trailer. And then last but not least, behind me, we have our white Volvo. We have these half mud flaps on the back of it. 
Last year we were driving the cemetery trailer around, which is the trailer we currently have on, and when we turned, we were going up a hill and turning just right, and we used to have a lower fifth wheel plate on this, and that made our trailer basically bump into these mud flaps, and it bent this back one. We want the mud flaps on here because these tires pick up rocks like nothing else you've ever seen, and then they huck them at the back of the semi and it breaks your back window, and it's really annoying. And so we wanted to get that straightened out. So Zach and Cooper came in here, they ordered some new brackets, they cut out the old stuff and they got this all fixed. So now when we're going down the road, we don't have to worry about rocks and we don't have to worry about mud getting over everything, which is kind of nice. And then I guess while we're here, this cemetery trailer, the jacks on it used to not really be the best. So Zach and Cooper worked on those and they got this all running now. So if we ever need to unhook this trailer, we'd actually have jacks on it. The more I walk around in here, the more that I think about, it it may look a little bit different right here because we have all this extra open space. We ended up selling our Massey Ferguson 2745. When I was a little boy, we used that tractor to pull a green cart. We basically have, well, we sold that green cart like 15 years ago. And then this tractor, over the last five years, we've hooked it up to the grain vac a couple times and that's about it. So we decided, you know what, we have enough other utility tractors for all of our other auger needs. This tractor doesn't serve us anymore, so we decided to give it to a home or sell it to a home that could actually utilize it. So we no longer have the 2745 and yes, my voice just cracked. Just think about how much easier this would be if we just had to press a button with the overhead door. Another pretty exciting piece of equipment that we get to run this year. Oh, I'm not really excited about the sun poking right into my eyeballs right now. But this is my brother's Polaris Ranger. And we got, oh, I should not say we, it was Zach and Cooper, got everything all mounted up for the Ag Leader GPS. So all the wiring has been ran. We have a globe sitting up on the top and on the inside we have a, literally a full-blown computer screen. Check this out. Just come on into my office. Cooper's got this thing tinted at like 5%. So only 5% of the outside light comes in. So it's, you literally can't see anything in from the outside. But you can see outside pretty good, especially during the day. But look at that. We have the whole monitor up inside of here. So now we can run our field mapping boundaries inside the cab. We're not getting smacked by the elements outside. And this Ranger is also outfitted with air conditioning and heat plus a radio. And I'm pretty positive I can connect my phone to that. So definitely overkill for a Ranger, but I mean, it's in here, <laughs> might as well use it, it's pretty cool. We've been running the Ranger on the farm for about a year now. This is my brother's Ranger. He wanted to get one, so he bought one and he's been nice enough, enough to let us use it. So we got all the GPS stuff inside of there. We can map out the field with it. And we've been using this to do some spot spraying around, which is nice. Cooper and Zach made a special tank that goes in the back. One's a 50 gallon tank and then the other one's a 25 gallon tank. And then they have like a eight foot boom that goes behind it. So they can go down waterways. They can spray stuff for just broadleaf and not kill the grass, which is nice. They can go around all the building sites, fence rows, you name it, wherever they want to go. They can, they can even do whole yards with the boom. Another nice thing, I, I know the bed on this is pretty small, but it is pretty handy for if you got just random stuff you kind of found out in the field, you can just go get it. It's a lot nicer driving this out there than the truck. When you got to get a big load of stuff, the truck still is superior, but for the little stuff, I mean, this is pretty stinking handy. This year we do have something kind of cool. Well, not kind of cool, this is really cool. They came out with a drone and they flew all of the fields that we ended up ripping last fall. And that drone can spot rocks out in the field, like from 100 feet up in the air. So this is their app. This is a company called TerraClear and they flew all the fields. So this is dad's house and you can see all of these colored dots, those represent rocks that we have out in the field. So like here we don't have any, which is nice. But then you get into here and oh, look at that. We got a whole bunch of rocks down in there. So this is the Hanson farm, or the farm we call the Hanson farm. This is the bush farm. Check this out. We got a big old patch of rocks up in there. So if we click on this, it actually color codes them. So we know what size rocks we are. And let's say we just want to get the big ones. So 12 inches or bigger. And we'll go up and hit done. And then look at that. And then it just shows us the ones that are 12 inches or bigger. So, you know, we're not messing around with all the little ones. So according to this, we have 
123 rocks, if it'll focus, there you go, 123 rocks that are 12 inches or bigger. So we definitely have our work cut out for us when it comes to picking up rocks, but this, super cool. I just want to make one thing clear here when it comes to companies that I talk about that we use or that I think maybe other farmers should look into. You need to do your own discretion if it's something you're looking on for your farm. I just talk about stuff that we are implementing into our operation and I think these things will help our operation whether from an efficiency standpoint or just making more money standpoint and so these are things we are legitimately doing. So if you are interested in running it on your farm, you need to do your own background vetting just with the problems I see us having and the things that I would like to do. I feel like these are the fits and I don't know what the right answer is. I'm just trying things. So this TerraClear company with the rocks, I don't like picking up rocks. It's an absolute pain, especially when you're out trying to work up a field or you're planting and you're getting out every 15 minutes to go throw a rock or you get out and then you find like 50 rocks in one area and then you have to leave that area and then you know always say, oh, I'm gonna come back. I kinda wanna get away from those days and I, I know we're always going to have rocks in areas, but a tool like this is pretty stinking cool. They actually have a machine. It's a skid loader, but it's autonomous. And the drone maps out where the rocks are in the field, and then the skid loader will come in, and then they made some sort of technology that will go up and it will pick the rocks by itself. They're supposed to be bringing that machine out, but we got rains last week and they are behind on their schedule. So I don't know if they are going to get here in time. We are looking at planting in a few days. Basically, once we get our rocks picked and get our fields smoothed out, we will be ready to plant. So we're not gonna wait for them. If they get here, they get here. If they don't, they don't. At least we're seeing what this drone technology does with if it can find the rocks and how accurate it is. I don't know yet. I have not been out in the field to fully test it for myself, but what I have seen, you can literally pull up pictures of the rock from the sky and look at it, but did it miss some around it? I don't know. We still have to test that out. I imagine that's probably going to be the case, and I imagine it's probably gonna say there are some areas that have a rock that are not actually a rock. This is new technology, but I think that this is gonna be something that's going to be coming to farms in the future, and I guess we're just being an early adopter here, but we're gonna find out how it works. Dad and Roman are actually gonna go out and start picking up rocks, so they're gonna get a first-hand test to see how this TerraClear works. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day. Sunny, a little windy, getting warmer. It means we're getting close to the planting season, and it means that we have to pick up some rocks. Today, I'm honored to work with Daddy Cornstar. We just got our pickup, our workhorse for today. All organized, washed up, so we can have it full of rocks. And we're just gonna go out in the field, find those rocks. We have a super cool app that you guys will see. And it will pinpoint exactly where our rocks are, so we can just come and snatch them out like a hawk. These going to be our helpers today. If the rock is embedded into soil too much, we can dig it out. And I think we're ready to go. The rock hunt has begun. This one has to be at least 300 pounds. Wow, you're strong. Ah! Man, that's kind of heavy though. I got mine. <laughs> wow, we hit a jackpot here. So basically all we have to do is just drive around and yeah, hit hit pull. them on the app and just hit pick, pick, pick. Yeah. It doesn't matter if we come back with rocks or not, as long as we clear them out in the app, it's all good. That's cold. It's called gaining the system. All you people are probably wondering, hey, is Roman a good person to work with? Roman is fantastic. I mean, he is just a great guy all around, honestly kind of a privilege today. You're probably watching Roman, seeing how he's straining. I really probably shouldn't tell our secrets. We went out and planted some rocks last night that are made out of styrofoam and painted them look like rocks. You think that's styrofoam? It's styrofoam. I put that one out there last night. Not the funnest job in the world, but it, it is when you got somebody good to work with and it's not hard just driving around, trying to look for things, pick up debris. 
it's easier to do it now before we get full swing in the field. 17 inches. I believe it. It is 17 inches for sure. Have you ever seen the farmer's GPS? That's what it looks like. It is spring and we already have a good harvest of rocks. Look at this pile. The truck is getting a little too heavy so we need to unload it next. And we have a little transmission leak so Daddy Cornstar is stopping it off with a transmission fluid so we can keep driving this beast. Yeah, it was wanting to kick in it out just a little bit. Need to find out where my tranny leak is. Ten years from now, you guys will be watching the videos. Ten years ago, Daddy Cornstar, you said you were going to look into that. Well, I haven't got it done yet. Should be okay, I guess. You can see all these rocks that came out of the fields throughout the years. I don't know how many years. But over and over these rocks come up every single year. And that's what farmers have to go through every single year. We're gonna go and get more rocks. I know these rocks are extremely hard. There was one of these rocks that was casted in, the, in Cole's basement foundation. And this thing would not just give up. It was extremely hard to chip off. Daddy Cornstar and I at the Mount Everest field and we're actually going after the fields that used to be cornfield in the past last year because they're gonna get uh, planted with soybeans this year. Cole said that we're going to plant soybeans first this year so we're concentrating on these fields so they get ready to be cultivated and then planted in soybeans. And here's a good example how Rock even this size can damage the equipment. You see these scars on it? Definitely has been run with a disc or planter. i not too familiar with any of the equipment that can do this damage, but yeah, it's a tough rock and metal parts would definitely not like it. You know, you think about like one little rock like that, if it gets up in your sickle section of the bean head, it takes out three or four sickle sections, and then time you get out and repair all that, it's just one less rock we gotta worry about. What do you think about soil? Is it ready? Not quite. And what the reason I say that, just taking the hand, and you dig down a little bit, you stick your hand in there and it's really, it's pretty cold yet. But it's, it's, it's packing, it's mucky. So it's early in the season, you know, a few really good days of 70 degree weather, but the ground, it's actually pretty cold down there. So I'd hate to be in it yet, but two, three days could really make a difference. And I know it's always hard and we're all guilty of it. We get out in the field with a piece of equipment, we're in that cab, we're up high, it's, you run the piece of equipment across the ground, you think, oh, it's ready. That's where you actually need to get out, touch it. It's just, it's pretty mucky yet. But we haven't had that warm, warm heat yet, or a lot of times in the spring, a really nice warm rain can really change things. And you're gonna see guys, and then even at this moment we're speaking, I know there's a couple guys out running, but their ground could be a little different. It could be a little drier, it could be sandier. Uh, but the worst thing is we don't know, like here I'm saying, Probably shouldn't be out there planting, but maybe somebody is planting. That might be the best crop this year. We don't know. Uh, and we never will know until that bin lid is closed on the bin this fall, what was the right move. But for us, since we have rocks to pick up and some stuff to do yet, I'm not panicky. It's early in the season yet. And just my gut feeling, feeling this yet is telling me, but three days from now, it could be it could be fit to go or sometimes you got to look at it too it's early in season but let's say we were looking close to may sometimes you got to say hey i gotta look at the calendar we need to go it's a tough call we're just west of main heated shop here and this little corner had a lot of rocks we're gonna leave that one behind daddy cornstar and i don't feel too strong to lift that one up or are not willing to sacrifice our back 
to break. So we're just gonna move on to the next spot. We were having a great time picking up rocks, did two loads by hand, then we bumped into some huge rocks, so we called up Cooper with a uh, skid, skid loader and dump trailer. And here we are now. Well, here we are pulling Daddy Cornstar out of the field. Cooper's, Cooper keeps bringing the rock, cleaning up the fields. And we're pulling the trouble out of here. Well, we saved one person today. Here we are at the campground farm, ready to unload our big load. And you'll see, we have some big boys in here. Seeing them pick up all those rocks makes you just wanna go climb out into the field and start searching for some rocks and load up your truck. We've been trying to figure out if there's a market for rocks. Like sometimes, I don't know if this is just like a, a fisherman's tale of, you know, they caught a fish that was from here to the ground, but sometimes you hear people selling hay racks of rocks for like $2,000 and we've never seen that. Like you can hardly even give the things away. Now, like if you have a really big one that someone wants in their yard or something, I'm sure. You know, usually you say, well, if you come and get it, you can have it. But I've heard of people buying those. And, okay, that makes sense. But you know, the like the six, eight inch, 10 inch ones. I don't know if, if people are interested in buying them, that'd be kind of cool. Cause I mean, we got a bunch. So the tractor beside me is our Massey Ferguson 4880. Before we bought the 340, this was the largest tractor we had on the farm. It's 325 horsepower. It's a four wheel drive machine, meaning the front's pull is the same as the back. So it's four wheel drive. It's not mechanical front wheel assist. So this pulls a little bit better in our opinion than an equivalent 325 horsepower tractor. This is a 1980. It does everything we need it to do. So that's why we keep it around. This is one of those ones where it articulates in the middle. So it's kind of cool. You can turn really sharp with it and you can back into tight areas. And when you line the back up to hook up to something, you can just turn the wheel and then you can move the hitch pin side to side versus having to pull forward and get lined back up. So that's kind of cool. But this tractor has been on the farm my entire life. I'm pretty sure we actually bought this tractor brand new and literally like 1980. But this tractor has been a couple of months in the shop and it wasn't being worked on for months, but it was over there for a while at our neighbor, Scott, who works on stuff in his machine shed. I don't really know what it all needed, but he worked on some stuff. This is supposed to be ready to go. And then behind it, we have one of our field finishers and Zach and Cooper got that in the shop. They looked through everything. They replaced some bearings, some broken blades, and that is all up to snuff. So I'm currently standing in the edge of a field that is going to be soybeans this year and we ripped it last fall so i'm thinking probably tomorrow honestly we will be out here working up some ground this is all ready to go and they got the rocks out of this field so yeah we're ready. While I'm out here in the field, I should also mention that we put all of our dry fertilizers on in the fall time. And on this particular field, we put crushed limestone on to help manage the acidity levels of the soil. Then we came in and ripped everything. So everything got turned underneath. It's incorporated. We got snow on it. We got rain on it. It froze. And so things shouldn't be starting to work their way into the soil. So when we make this next tillage pass with the field finisher, it is solely really just to smooth everything off, get rid of all these tire ruts, get rid of all these big clods, and make it a nice smooth seed bed for the planter to drive on. I'm pretty sure my brother has the telehandler in the heated shop right now, trying to lift the lawnmower over all of the wood that is sitting between the telehandler and the lawnmower, because he doesn't want to move the wood. I, I'm willing to bet that's what he just tried to do. And he probably would have done it too, but there's too much wood in between, so he had to boom too far out. So when he lifted up the lawnmower, the back wheels of the tail handler were coming off the ground. Hey, you gotta give him points for creativity. <laughs> Try not to dump the lawnmower. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main heated shop. The reason why we call this the main heated shop is because when we're working on stuff, this is the main area where we do it. This is more of a maintenance shop slash if we have a big project we need to work on, it's going to be done down here. So Zach and Cooper have been basically living in here for the past couple months. Every bit of equipment that they've worked on has been done down here. They are so bright. You almost need a welding helmet. <laughs> they are really, really nice though. Dad is referring to the lights that are above me. Northwest Lighting Systems came out this winter and they installed 32, or they brought out, we installed them, but 32 LED lights. We had 30 foot candles of light before on the floor with our old lights and these ones brought us up to 130. So we are over three times brighter with these lights than we were before. And they're also on motion sensors, so it's kind of cool. You can have them set. You can just leave your light switches on when you leave, then they shut off. So we have it set front half, back half, and then when you come back in, then it senses you, and then it turns the front half on, and then when you walk into the back half, it'll turn the back half on. But then when you leave, after like 10 minutes, then they shut off, you can set it to whatever you want. But we have it set at 10 minutes, and then you're not just leaving your lights on all the time, but then you don't always have to mess with light switches. So when you pull in with a piece of equipment and you don't wanna have to you know, find your way through everything on the floor to go turn the lights on when it's dark, when, as soon as you open the door, they just turn on. It's, it's pretty cool. We just have two things left down here to work on to get ready for planting season, and that is both of the sprayers. Last fall, they were inspected, and we had a list of items that we had to order. We have those items ordered. We just need to get those onto the sprayer. I know sprayer number one has a cracked exhaust manifold and then the windshield wiper doesn't work the spray for the windshield wiper doesn't work i know both of them have some lights that don't work anymore and some blinkers so we would like to get those things fixed it's nothing very big we just need to get on it but that's what we are waiting on to get the sprayers done and then once those are done we have everything 100 percent ready to go to get into the field every february on the farm our local filter store has a big sale where sometimes you can get some of them 50 percent off we go through a lot of filters on the farm we have like, I counted one time, 43 vehicles with engines in them that need a filter. So we go through a lot of them and some are big, some are small. And we basically try to order as many of them as we can at once during that sale. So this is the bounty of our filter sale. We actually have been thinning down on what we used to use we've been coming up with a better system of records versus just thinking oh well i i think we use five of those and then we end up looking on the back shelf you can see all the extra filters we have back there so the name of the game is let's just buy what we need so start the year with the full shelf and then by the end of the year we have an empty shelf then when the next sale comes around then we replenish that would be ideal i mean clearly we not the best at it but we're getting there. We're, we're trying new things and figuring out how to be more efficient. I know this looks a little bit discombobulated, but we do have a method to what's going on. Over here, we have primarily water filters and fuel filters. And then in this center part, we have hydraulic filters, oil filters for the tractor. So these ones are pretty big. So we like to make sure we have a lot of nice room for them. These weigh like three or four pounds. These are some pretty serious filters. And then we have all the gasoline engine oil filters and then last but not least down here, we have all of our inner and outer air filters for the combines, the sprayers, the tractors. So everything's kind of got a place, but we definitely have a little bit of extra filter inventory right now. I guess instead of just talking about it, I might as well show you, this is the sprayer setup that Cooper and Zach built. So they custom fabricated 100% of everything here. Well, they didn't make the tanks and they didn't make the pumps that go on top of them. And I don't think they made the hose reels, but they made all the bracketry and how everything sits in the positioning and all of that. So this actually sits where we can put the skid loader forks through it. So if we need to lift it up into the Ranger, we can. If we want to take it out of the Ranger, we can. And that's super handy because then that basically prevents the back of the Ranger from being tied up all summer long while we have the sprayer in the back. But they got this set up on two reels. So one's for the 50 gallon tank on the front and the other reel is for the 25 gallon tank on the back. So they can run two different sets of things in here. This does plumb into their boom and it runs off of the Ranger. So we don't have to have an auxiliary battery back here. They also built this where it's a double decker system. So that way they can put the tailgate of the Ranger up. It makes things look nice clean. 
And uh, we're pretty looking forward to using this. We haven't used it yet. They just built it this winter. So we'll probably be tossing in the back of the Ranger here one of these days. The next really big update, which is something I've been looking forward to a long, long time, is right outside of the main heated shop. If we look down at the bottom of this valley, we can see some dust over there on the horizon, right along this old creek line. We're gonna head right down there. That's just a beautiful sight, isn't it? We have a Cat 320CL loading big dump trailer with a bunch of trees. This is a project I'm pretty stinking excited about. We've sunk several hundred man hours into what we've already done, but we're down here along the creek by Dad's house. We have a mile and a half of creek, so we have Bush Farm behind us, Hanson Farm on the other side, and then the field around Dad's house over on the other side. We've had a bunch of dead trees along this mile and a half of creek line for a long time, laying down in the grass area on the side. There's been rocks, there's been holes, there's been big high spots. When floods come in, more trees come, more just really junk gets kind of brought in. And so we've wanted to clean this area up. Over the years, we've been piling everything up, we've been burning the trees, and then we push them back together, we burn them. What we have left is the big stuff that we cannot move with our equipment. So we asked Ron, our bulldozer guy, if he would come down with his excavator and his dump trailer, and so he's done just that. So he's coming along, picking up all these trees, loading them up into his big dump wagon, and then we're putting them in a big pile. I'm gonna get out of the way here so I don't get crushed by a giant tree. But then he's gonna push them into a big pile, and then we'll burn everything up because he can stack it nice with the excavator. And then what we have left for big rip balls and stuff, then we'll just be able to bury. We got a nice spot on the bottom of a big hill over on the Hanson farm where we cannot get in and farm. So that's where we're locating everything. It's about a half mile drive. Zach's running the dump trailer right now. So he's bringing that over to him. We got just a little bit left on this side. We'll hop across the other side shortly and start loading up some more. But the goal is, once we get all of these trees out of the way, then we will be able to come in and seed everything with grass nicely, 30, 40 feet out from the edge of the creek. And then Cooper's gonna pick up a mile and a half, well, technically 30, 40 feet on one side of the creek, a mile and a half, 30, 40 feet on the other side of the creek, a mile and a half. And he's gonna be able to come in, mow this, rake it, and bale it. So this is gonna help with his hay production. It's also gonna help with the efficiency of fa the farms because when we turn around with the equipment, we don't have to worry about something falling into a big hole. We don't gotta worry about hitting something that's sitting in the tall grass. And then we can also look at our tile inlets that come into the creek to make sure that those are flowing the way they're supposed to. So it's gonna give us access during the summertime. And then it's also gonna be able, allow us to be able to travel through this, control weeds, and all the little scrubby trees and stuff that we don't want growing along the creek that will cause the edge to erode out. We can snip those off when they're the size of my pinky before they cause any problem whatsoever. So this is gonna help us in several ways and I am excited to get this project done. I, I like watching the bulldozer and I like watching the excavator, but I also like the look of a really clean farm. And this is, is going to be a clean farm when we get this done. Right here is a pretty prime example of a lot of what we are seeing. We have a big ripple and we have a little pebble. And those are pretty hard for us to move with our equipment, especially that little pebble. So Ron can make pretty light work of this stuff. I might have spoken a little too soon about the Tarek there, guys. I just got a text message from them. They are headed over to my Uncle Orland's farm. They're gonna start picking up rocks. So let's go. I guess see this machine live in action. We got a couple mile drive over to Uncle Orland's farm, so on our way there, I guess another big update that I've had in my life is my Spanish has gotten significantly better. If you don't know, I've been trying to learn Spanish for the last 762 days. I have practiced every single day. I try to practice for 30 minutes at a time when I do it, so at least 30 minutes of Spanish practice every day. Neva and I have been going to a Hispanic congregation church where Neva's mom is the pastora, and pretty much everyone there only speaks Spanish, and I can have legitimate conversations with people, which is absolutely incredible to me because when I was in high school, I wanted nothing to do with Spanish whatsoever. I took one class my freshman year of high school, so I ruined my 4.0 GPA, and I had no interest in it at all, whatsoever. I'm not a big grammar speech kind of guy, and uh, that's how I felt Spanish was, but half of my family speaks Spanish now, so I, I like talking, so <laughs> I wanted to be able to visit with them. 
so I decided to learn and it's been going really well it, it's I mean it's not maybe as fast as you would like it to be like you just think oh man I should be speaking Spanish now that's enough Spanish talk I think we're rolling up here to Travis from TerraClear hey aren't you supposed to be in the skid loader Working on that. Looks like he's already dumped one little load of rocks and I guess he just got done and he's got his second load and oh, he's got a couple big ones in there. Really big ones. Oh boy. So we were a little slow getting here on Uncle Orland's farm. They got it picked in 1.2 hours so now they're gonna head down to where Ron and Zach are working in the excavator and the dump trailer. So I guess we're just gonna retrace our steps and follow these guys over there. I take that back. We thought he was done, but I guess he's got like 30 more rocks he's gonna pick up. So we're gonna go see this machine live in action. I guess they are working on a, a fully autonomous thing that is coming. So there's a guy actually in the skid loader right now. Is, is that right, Travis? That is right. Here, you gotta, you gotta talk Yep, to we're to working that. on a full autonomous rock picker right now too. <laughs> That's gonna be cool. So this is, Probably, I don't know, 150 pound rock. That's a pretty big guy. That's it compared to my foot. Let's see what this thing can do. He's got the, it looks like rubber tracks. It's just gonna grab it and, oh, look at this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're looking for another big rock to show and instead of just sitting here looking out we can use technology since they flew over with the drones. Travis has it here on his phone so we can find the big ones. So where are we going? We're going to this big red one right here okay. and that is a 23 inch rock. It's a 23 inch rock. Well what about that big one right there that I see? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably it right there. So yeah, we're driving up to it, and there's our dock coming up to the big rock right here. And, and drove it right to it. And there it is. So he's gonna be here in just a second. He's boogieing along in that skid loader, but this thing is pretty mesmerizing to watch. Here we go, okay. Got it up out of the ground getting a good bite on it now there we go we got all the claws locked in he's gonna suck it up in tip it back you know was that rock guard in front of the windshield always there it was after the second rock <laughs> <laughs> you only make the mistake one time another thing we've been doing a lot of discussion about over the winter time is estate planning so dad and I have gone to a meeting where we consulted with a professional about the farm planning estate from passing from dad to me and Cooper. So today we actually have another meeting going to it. So I guess here we go. Well, and we got to remember, we got to be, we want to be fair to the daughter Summer and we got to make sure we got things set up. If I would go before mom, how mom takes care of things. If mom goes before me, how we take care of our three kids. So it, it really gets confusing it's it makes you think in areas you haven't really thought on that so it's just uh trying to look out for the for my family it's hard this is why we are going to a professional rock picking today took a different turn i was a little bit disappointed when cooper left because he's not feeling well because i started to think well if daddy corn start cole is not here because they have an appointment Cooper is not feeling well, what am I gonna do? Because I need operator for the dump truck and operator for the skid steer, unless it's gonna be just a waste of time. Walk in the field and do it all manually. Well, but then help showed up and I'm not longer short on help. Look at this. Remember the pictures of the rocks that we had on the map? So this guy is going after them, but using the machine. He produces the bucket, the skid steer bucket, about every seven to 10 minutes. So now I'm afraid that I won't be able to keep up dumping the rocks. Another load, but now since we have a big helper with their machine, there'll be many more loads to go. 
You can see how Hunter is going after individual rocks. He has his screen in front of him and it will he's just going according to GPS maps and he's just picking those rocks out. <laughs> Hunter, the rock hunter, yes his name is Hunter, had left to clean up the other fields that are not so bad. So I parked the dump trailer here and we actually need the water supply for the sprayer and it's at the Cole's house and of course we cut the wires to the pump and we also broke off the pipe so the water will be shooting out in the house if we start the pump so we need to find the diameter to buy a cap for it and run a new wires to the pump so we can use it. Let's go and do that. All I've been doing is trying to figure out the way that that pump was wired because I don't remember all I did just snip the wires. So I figured out that it, it uses two phases, two hot wires, no neutral so we'll have to take two hot wires from the main uh, breaker panel or it's not breaker, fuse box, bring it on bring it here, connect the two and we need to figure out the diameter of the cap so we can glue it on otherwise if we turn the pump on it will just start pumping through this hole here through this pipe. So we don't need anything right now I just need to figure out what what tools and supplies we need for tomorrow get them oh and also I remember that I have a wire that was feeding that so I might be able to bring it back to use. Our meeting went pretty good. We definitely kind of have our eyes open to the space and always when you're working with financial professionals, I mean, you kind of have to look at what their point of view is, which is to sell you something. And that thing that they're selling you is to try to be a benefit for you. So, I mean, it's not just a one-sided equation, but I guess the, the way we kind of view money and assets in our family is probably different than most. So we definitely took into account a lot of what they said, but we still have some views on things, but it's nice because we can tell them our views and then they say, hey, well, you may be overlooking this. We just want to make sure this is covered. And then they help us come up with a good plan. So, I mean, we've been impressed with the people we've been working with. This is definitely not a one discussion thing. What we're trying to do is figure out some sort of transitionatory plan for the farm. So, I mean, we, we don't live forever. And when dad passes the farm on to Cooper, and me, my sister, my mom, what does that look like? If you're trying to take something and give it to four people and then say, okay, if any decision is going to be made, you all four have to agree, that's not always the best idea. But what is fair, what is not necessarily equal in value per se, but fair and figure something out from there. Or, hey, if you guys are wanting to farm, it makes sense that the farm stuff continues with you guys. But if you're not wanting to farm, what does that look like? Like you're still part of the family. And then also, how is mom taken care of in this? How is my brother taken care of? How am I taken care of? How is Cooper taken care of? And so that's all things we're trying to figure out. There's definitely no one size fits all when it comes to this. It's an incredibly complicated puzzle, but we're at least looking into it and we're learning what options are available and what we can and cannot do. And then so that's going to allow us to come up with a plan. Once we have a plan, then we can start to execute. And I mean, it's really as simple as that, but sometimes coming up with the plan can be a little bit of a challenge. So that's what's been going on on the farm while we've been working in the house. And I think we're basically caught up to everything. So I am going to go to bed. We have a day in the field tomorrow. So here we go. Spring is here.